this is probably top of my list up there with funding as to how I evaluate a company. Does this hot new space company sound too good to be true? Well, it probably is. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to spot a BS space company. Hi, my name is Lara Forsick. I am the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. There are some key things to keep in mind when you're evaluating the likelihood that a company will succeed or the likelihood that a company is just a flash in the pan. First off, I want to begin by saying that nobody starts anything expecting to fail. I didn't start my company expecting to fail. Entrepreneurs do risky things all the time and they expect to succeed. In fact, our world has been changed and formed because of the risky things that entrepreneurs have done. So don't take this video to be in any way a bash on entrepreneurs or people who join small startups who are doing ambitious work. No, this is a video to show you how to spot the difference between a company that's doing ambitious work that may actually succeed versus a company that is pretty much doomed to start unless something major changes. Here are some top red flags to keep an eye out for. This is not a complete list, but it is just some that are on the top of my list. Number one, funding. Funding is probably the number one way that you can evaluate the realism of a company, but not all funding mechanisms are the same. Take a look at what funding this company has achieved so far. Do they have contracts, whether that's private or government contracts? Do they have only letters of intent or um, MOUs? Because those are not equivalent to contracts. Those are essentially promise notes that may turn out to be zero. And so keep a look to see what kind of funding is coming in. If it's a government contract, is it stable government money? Is this program in danger of being canceled, for example? Is it on the chopping block with some of the difficulties right now as I record this that Congress is going through with the White House to determine the budget? So even government funding might not be 100% certain. What about the private contracts they have? Do they come from stable companies? Do they come from well-established companies? Or do they come from companies that actually might fold themselves and therefore not be able to pay the company that we are evaluating? What about investments? We saw here in the United States the rise of the SPAC era, that special purpose acquisition company. And I do have to say that my suspicions about the space companies that chose to go public through a SPAC method ended up about as well as I expected. That is not well. <laughs> so I had red flags about SPACs to start. Yes, it can work. And we are seeing some space companies that made their public exits through a SPAC mechanism work. However, most of those were risky moves because they were not at a stage in their company, whether that's pre-revenue or even pre-product, where they could actually have a return on investment in the public sector. So keep that in mind when evaluating how a company chooses to get their investments. Private investors are a more traditional way to go, but keep in mind that if it's one big private investor and they pull out, as we have seen with some space companies, then that can leave a giant hole where that company thought they were stable, they are no longer stable. If this company is raising round after round after round and they seem to be making good progress, then they're probably pretty stable with the investments that they are receiving. And then take a look at any companies that are backed by a wealthy benefactor. You could probably name them off the top of your head. SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic. And we have seen examples of certain companies failing or needing to pivot because of a wealthy backer that did not support the company or passed away. So for example, recently here, as I record this, Virgin Orbit did not make it, went bankrupt despite being backed by Richard Branson. Strata Launch had to pivot away from its original intent because its original wealthy backer passed away. Also take a look to see if this company has publicly announced any kind of projected costs. And this is a big red flag if a company says that they are going to reduce costs of something to do with space light or space hardware significantly in a short period of time. Or on the other hand, if this company says that they need to spend a significant amount of money to accomplish their goals, especially in order to become profitable, and yet it doesn't seem like they have a means of getting that funding, or at least getting the majority of that funding at this time. 
So for example, if a company says they are going to build a commercial space station that houses people and human spaceflight is always going to be more expensive than uncrewed spaceflight, that is a very expensive undertaking. And if this company doesn't have obvious backers, let's say a NASA contract or a wealthy founder, for example, then you might question where is this company going to get the money it needs to build its main product to get that funding. There are some companies that are finding ways in order to make money. And there are some companies that I honestly do not know where they're going to get their funding to make this happen. And finally, if a company says they are going to be relying on a specific funding provider, let's say NASA or the DOD, in order to have their plans financed, do their plans align with what this funder is actually wanting to do? So if a company says they're going to be funded by NASA or becoming more common these days, if a company says they're going to be funded by SpaceX and this company's plans don't align with NASA's plans or with SpaceX's plans, then why on earth would a funder give funding to another company that doesn't align with their plans? Number two, experience. Does this company have either a founder or a founding team or first hires that have credible experience in the space sector already or a credible experience in a related sector. This is an area that needs to be taken with uh, nuance. So if a founder has no space experience at all, but they have funding, they can hire on people who are experienced. So you can't always take into account the founding team's experience. Sometimes it truly is about who those initial employees are, who they choose to bring on board, which of these initial employees who are credible are saying yes to a startup that they think will succeed. But if the founder, if the founding team, if the initial employees have no experience in the space sector at all or any related field, then you have to wonder, how are they even planning to accomplish their goals? How do they know what to do in order to design and implement a space related company or program? Do these employees have the experience to uh, properly estimate the scope of a project, the expense of a project, the timeline of a project, how difficult a project is? And there's a reason why space is hard is a catchphrase that we roll our eyes at, but it is true, right? It is very difficult to accomplish what we want to accomplish in the space sector and people who come from outside it may not be aware of just how complex it can be. And finally, do those initial employees have the right connections? That is connections both in terms of funding, but also connections in terms of getting things done, being able to find out who they can partner with for any kind of space related uh, supply chain or regulations or uh, actually launching things and, and integrating it into a launch vehicle, whatever it happens to be, do they have the right connections or are they hiring people who have the right connections who can make that happen? And here's a tip for you, Astrolytical is one of those places Places where you can go to get that kind of help if you don't have it. Number three, realism. This is probably top of my list up there with funding as to how I evaluate a company. If a company is throwing out unrealistic expectations, huge red flag because it often means they don't know what they're talking about. It takes time to do things in the space sector. It took SpaceX 18 years from founding to launching people. 18 years. So if a company comes in there and says they're going to launch human beings in three years or do some extraordinary cadence of launches in five years, that's red flags. This might go back to expertise. This might go back to funding. Do they have the expertise to evaluate how realistic their plans are? Do they have the funding to accomplish what they say they're going to accomplish in the time frame that they want to accomplish it? Is this even in the realm of possibility of our understanding of physics? And this is a hard one. I am a physicist and sometimes it's hard for me to even judge whether this is physically even possible. But chances are, if it's proposing a huge leap in technology, then it's going to take a long time to accomplish if it's even possible. And finally, four, progress. Is this company actually making progress 
Or is it just a paper company, a PowerPoint company? You cannot make progress in space with PowerPoint. The company actually needs to make some progress. And another red flag within this topic is a company that keeps changing its name or rebranding to hide the fact that it has not made much progress or any progress in the years that it has been in existence. If this is a hardware company, do they have prototypes? Do they have tests? Do they have actual hardware in space? Where is their technology on the TRL scale? If they are stuck in the early TRL and their whole company isn't about R&D, then they're not making significant progress to actually make a profit at the end of the day. And remember, that is the goal of a company. A company differs from a government organization or a nonprofit in that it needs to make profit. So if a company does not have some kind of product or service that can come online and have customers or clients, therefore, it is not going to make money, it is not going to be able to pay back its stakeholders, and it is not going to succeed. Now, a company can have everything right. A company can be doing all the right things with its funding and experience and realistic projections and still fail because it's very, very difficult to judge how healthy a company is. And you never know when something is going to go significantly wrong that all of a sudden wipes out a company. So when evaluating a company, it's sometimes very easy to see which ones aren't going to succeed or are not likely to succeed and which ones you think might actually succeed, but end up not doing so, end up failing. If you are a company with revenue or investment funding and you are trying to make progress in the space industry, whether you're coming from outside the space sector or you are a newer company or you're just trying to expand your offerings or expand your marketplace, contact Astrolytical. Our whole business is to help companies, organizations, and government entities to grow in space, which means you. And if you are a startup or an investor, talk to us about evaluating pitch decks because we do that too.